Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the solution to problem 1a slash 2c from round 736. Like 1a, which is the same problem as 2c, and it's called Web of Lies. All right. So as always, if you haven't read the problem yet, go read the problem first before watching this video. And yeah, um, you know the drill. So um, the first thing to notice is that um, we can represent the, this problem as a graph because um, it describes a, that a friendship between like nobles A and B. We can basically just think of it as a friendship between like a node A and a node B. And so like say, let's just say for example, um, one, like if we have nobles one, two, and three, if there's a friendship between noble between person one and person three, then we draw an edge from node one and node three. And then similarly, if there's like, for example, if there's a friendship from node one to node two, or like from person one to person two, then we draw an edge between node one and node two. And the reason why it's helpful to think of a problem like this, um, well, the reason for that will become apparent like really soon. So I'll explain why. So think about what the condition is for a noble to be vulnerable. So a noble is vulnerable if the noble has at least one friend and all the noble's friends have a higher power. So what does this mean? Well, let's think of it like this. Basically, what this means is that a node in our graph is considered to be vulnerable if its degree is at least one, so if it's connected to at least one other node, and all of the nodes that are adjacent to the current node are higher than this node. So in this example, like node one is currently vulnerable because all of its neighbors, in this case, node two and node three are higher than one. So what happens then is like node one gets killed off and then all these edges basically disappear. And then node two and node three are left. And so if our graph looked like this, then the answer to this um, graph would be two because there's two nodes that are remaining. Okay, so that's like cool and all. Let's try to figure out when a node is vulnerable. Like, or I guess, when does a node not get affected? So let's think of it like this. We know that um, our graph has n nodes and each one is labeled from one to n. So all of these node labels are going to be distinct. So this means that if we have a node one, then any other node that exists is going to be higher than node one. So like, let's just say, for example, if we had like five nodes in total, these would be like node three, node four, node five, and so on. Node, and then we want to think about under what conditions will node one never be vulnerable? In other words, if after this process ends, how can we ensure that node one um, stay, like, stays alive after the process? And then like we can realize that node one can only stay alive if it wasn't connected to any of these other nodes to begin with. And the reason being is that if no matter what connection or like no matter what edge we draw from node one, it's always going to go to a node that's higher than node one. So like for example, if we draw from one to four, four is higher than one. So what this means is like, because node one now has a degree of at least one and it's adjacent to a node that's higher and all the adjacent nodes are higher than it, the node one is going to die. And because node one is the smallest node, this basically means for node one specifically, it's going to die if it has um, any neighbors whatsoever. And so we like basically, will like get rid of node one. So let's just say our graph looks like this, for example, then node one dies and then these edges die as well. And then we look at node two. And then node two in right now is the, um, is currently, the lowest node in this graph because we already deleted node one. So we can apply the same logic. If node two is connected to some other existing node, that existing node has to be larger than node two. In this case, um, three, four, and five are still alive as well as node two. And if node two is connected to any of these nodes, then node two is going to be vulnerable because even if it had an edge connected to node one beforehand, node one would have already been deleted. And so even if an edge existed between node one and node two, this edge is now gone. So 
In this case, node 2 gets deleted because it's connected to some higher node. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, if we think about this process in kind of inductively, this means that if we were to think of like nodes disappearing in like sequential order from 1 to 2 all the way up to like node n, for example, potentially, this means that um, after we remove, like, if for a given node v, if we've already processed all of these previous nodes, we know that all of these previous nodes have either been deleted or their degree is equal to zero. And the reason why their degree has to be equal to zero is this. Let's say, like, currently we have node v, and then let's just assume that there's some node b that hasn't been deleted, such that b is less than v. What this implies about node b is that um, we either have like two different possibilities. Either node B like has had some edges connected to node A. Like let's say there's an edge from A to B. Or yeah, so like let's just say like in the initial graph, node A was like connected to node B. Then if A was less than B, then because A was before B, A would have already been deleted anyway because A is less than B. So at any point in this process, we know that this edge, this neighbor will always exist. And so when we get to node A, all of its, it has a positive number of neighbors that are higher than it. And all of these neighbors are higher than A. So A would have actually been deleted. So this edge can't exist anyway when, once we get to node B. Likewise, if we have an edge from A to B, where um, in this case A is greater than B, then this implies something similar for B. Because B has, um, all the neighbors of B still exist after we get to node B, all of these neighbors have to be greater than B, which then implies that B should have been deleted, which contradicts our assumption that B still exists and is less than B. So if node B either doesn't exist or if it doesn't have um, any edges going out of it, then it can't affect the state of V whatsoever. So this is why um, we can like think of this process in like this ascending order, where we delete like node one, where we like handle node one and handle node two and like so on. And so node v is only dependent on, is really only dependent on any edges such that it goes from like node v to node x, where v is less than or equal to x. And if any of these edges, and if any x exists, in other words, if there's any edge that goes from v to x, then v has to be deleted. Otherwise, V stays alive. That's the only condition that we need to check to see whether a node stays alive or not. So what we can do is we can just maintain an array um, that does this. When we add an edge, when we add an edge A, B into the graph, we maintain count of like count of node V, where this is like, this is equal to the number of neighbors, uh, number of neighbors, Number of neighbors, um, I'll just say, I'll just say x such that um, u, or I guess, yeah, count at u is, da, 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 node u is less, strictly less than node x. And we want to count how many neighbors these exist. Because if count at u is positive, if this is positive, then node u will be deleted. The, node u will die at some point. Node u will die. And like likewise, if count u is equal to zero, that's the node u will stay alive at the end of our process. Um so yeah. Hold on. <coughs> okay. So basically what we can do is when we add a new okay let's just think about adding an edge first. If we add an edge A B then we all we have to do is we have to um, increment this value by one. So this increases by one if we add an edge A and B. Okay, so that's if we add an edge. And then what if we want to subtract an edge? It's like we want to subtract an edge from, or I guess remove an edge AB. Then all we have to do is to um, decrease like the count value for the smaller node by one. And then to get the query, um, in order to query our answer, we just want to count um, how many x exists such that count at x is equal to zero. 
and this will be our answer at any given like any graph state in any set of edges. So um, the way we can implement this is we can just, because these values, we only change one variable at a time, for every update that we do, our answer can only increase by at most one. Like it can increase or decrease by at most one. So we can basically just maintain like this, the answer over like as we make a query. And then every time we want to um, output the, the current answer, we just output it. So yeah, um, you can do this in O of n time with O of n memory. Like, so is this O of n overall? Or I guess to be more specific, if we have n, n nodes and m queries, then, okay, well, I guess, hold on. Yeah, it's like, it's basically n plus m, where m is the number of queries that we make, where a query is either adding an edge, subtracting an edge, or like, um, retrieving an answer. So yeah, this is how you do problem 1a slash 2c from round 736.